Once you are awake, it is almost impossible to fall back to sleep again. Once you discover that the earth is not a spinning globe, but a flat and stationary plane with a firmament above it, everything changes. The trusted voices and satanic scientific priests who once shaped our reality and understanding of the world are no longer reliable. Our first-hand experience of the Earth as a stationary realm is at odds with their fabricated narrative of space and spinning planets. The scarring of our land and the barbaric mining of Earth's once majestic giant trees is at odds with the history books and geological narrative. And the awaker left wondering, what on earth happened? If they've lied about the earth, space, and the destruction of our flat realm, then how can we trust the official mainstream historical narrative? The historical narrative, like the heliocentric model, does not make sense. It doesn't add up. And all it takes is a closer examination and their lies which have governed our understanding of history and the world since our birth begin to fall apart. Let's stir the mind with a few contemplations. We are told that the first true power tool was invented in 1895 when a German company combined an electric motor with a manual drill. The drill weighed 16 and a half pounds and required multiple operators. It wasn't until 1957 that a company called Bosch began designing power tools in bulk that were both economical and powerful. So then how did our historical ancestors, a more primitive, underdeveloped people, design and build some of the structures we encounter? What about all the gigantic monolithic stones we encounter that have been cut with such precision? Ask yourself, could you repeat this today with the arsenal of equipment we have at our disposal? And what about the magnificent ancient step wells of the East? Step wells, we are told, were multi-storied wells built by our primitive ancestors as ways to preserve the water supply during droughts. But look at the intricacy and complexity of these structures. Look at the glory and the finesse. Look at the geometric precision. All dug out and crafted from using hand tools. Yeah, right. What about the gigantic canal networks we find all over the world? The Erie Canal in America was allegedly built between 1817 and 1825. There were no civil engineers in America at this time. The people responsible for planning construction were novices, we are told. The canal is 12 meters wide and 4 meters deep. The Erie Canal spans 363 miles. But this was not just a case of digging each day for the Irish immigrants and their oxen companions. They had to fell hundreds of trees as they passed through the virgin forest. They had to build complicated aqueducts and locks and they had to pass through the Niagara Escarpment, an 80-foot high wall of hard limestone. They had to use black powder to blast through this, we are told, as dynamite had yet to be invented. The canal spans 363 miles and was constructed over an eight-year period. This means that on average, one mile was completed every eight days. What a record, especially since those responsible were novices and power tools and dynamite were yet to be invented. I can tell you now 
The so-called early settlers of the Americas did not build these canal systems. And what of the grand and magnificent castles scattered across our realm? Did you know that most were designed and constructed without plumbing systems and methods to heat rooms properly? Hmm. The royal and the elite of the past were content without having the accessible necessities of survival just as long as they could live within the grand and the glorious. While the peasants, in their modest abodes, enjoyed warmth throughout the long dark winters? I don't think so. And of course, there is the impossibility of the Great Giza Pyramid Complex. The pyramids, we are told, were constructed somewhere around 2500 BC. The Great Pyramid itself consists of 2.3 million blocks of limestone and granite, and its overall structure weighs 6 million tons. The largest granite stones weigh between 20 and 80 tons each. 20 tons is 20,000 kilograms. These blocks were carved from quarries with copper chisels and allegedly transported from 800 kilometers away. The so-called experts can only theorize that a vast amount of slave labor was required. Being gullible and falling for the official narrative of slave labor is one thing, but can someone please explain how the air shafts of the Great Pyramid align so neatly with the circumpolar stars. And then there is the curious case of star forts, or what the official liars of the world call bastion forts. Developed in the late 15th and early 16th century, these forts, we are told, were designed during an era of gunpowder and the cannon. The geometric design offered a nation's military protection against blind spots during conflict. Of course they did. We all know that the best protection during war is to design a fort with such precise geometric patterning. Has any real historian ever stopped to think just how perfect the geometry is here? Our primitive ancestors did not have the technology to view structures from above, but they still managed to achieve this? Give me strength. There is no way. We could not produce such perfect geometry on this scale today. We've been fooled once again. We have been indoctrinated with a false historical narrative and timeline. And, like the silly, heliocentric model, all it takes is a closer look at this narrative and things soon start to fall apart and the lies become so blatantly evident. Because of their satanic lies, piecing together an accurate, honest historical timeline has become an impossible Rubik's Cube. The official narrative, a Pandora's box, only offering us tiny clues, half-truths and deceptions. The stitchings of our true historical timeline have been loosened. The contents are raised and muddled before we were even born into this world. And herein lies the problem. How to know where you are going if you don't know where you are in the first place. But you see, awakening is truly a gift. Once awake, we learn that we've always had the answers right in front of us. We've always had more than we know. But we had to regain our sight first before things started falling into place. Before things started to make a little more sense. 
And here we are again, viewer, at the precipice of another great journey. What if I told you that before us there existed a civilization that was responsible for the most advanced technology ever developed, and that it was their understanding of the workings of our flat realm that was key to their innovation? And what if I told you that it is highly likely that our true history as a people only begun just over 200 years ago? Would you think of me as mad once again? Do I sound as preposterous as when I first told you that the earth is flat? Perhaps. And that's why I need to show you. What I hope to show you is one of the greatest cover-ups of all time. It is on par with the heliocentric lie in its enormity and the impact it has upon humanity. And, as I will try to show you, it is inextricable from the true nature of our flat realm Earth, and you cannot understand one without understanding the other. We cannot waste time, for we must journey in search of lost time. At its heart, this is a story about deception. It is also a story of endings and beginnings, of death and rebirth. And please bear with me. Due to the deceptions and falsities underpinning our historical narrative, this story cannot be told in a linear fashion. We need to go back and forth in time to really draw out something that brings us a little closer to the truth. It is also imperative to understand that like much contemporary science, History as a discipline was corrupted a long time ago. At its most innocent, a lot of established historical narrative is guesswork. But at its worst, it is a set of lies agreed upon, as the so-called Napoleon put it so succinctly. We are going to be digging in the dark. No historian will be there to help us. We are alone in this journey. Our journey is a hunt for things buried in plain sight. And things may become a little uncomfortable at times, but it is necessary. We have been living a comfortable lie for far too long now. Come on, jump in and put your seatbelt on. For to understand our place in the world, we need to do the unthinkable. It's time for us to take a journey back to the future.